Okay, so in this video, we're going to do what is called a dirty rice technique. And so I'm going to show you how to take raw, uncooked rice, a stocking or pantyhose, and a slab of clay, and create a hollow form very quickly. Okay, let me, excuse me, let me get in the camera here. This is my prop. Uh, this paper rabbits some inspiration. I also have some images of rabbits and I'm going to spontaneity uh, or spontaneity wise going to develop a rabbit. I'm not sure which one yet. Standing, sitting, laying. But I'll be making that this morning. So first thing we have, tools we're going to use. You need a water and some paint brushes, a flexible metal rib, fettling knife, modeling sticks or wood knife for scoring, a needle tool, and a bat. So those are the tools we'll be using. Okay. Now we're also going to be using our rice and penny hose. So this is actually a stocking and I have uncooked rice. And you want to be careful, you don't want to get it everywhere. Uh, it's good to get the rice, put it in a bowl or a container and get a small cup, open up the stocking or pantyhose and fill it up okay um, what's great about using this to create form is one of many things um, if i wanted to make a skull or a head i could squash this down and i can get a nice round shape if i wanted to make say a snail or a chili pepper i mean i could elongate this really long tie it off and i have a very unusual long shape that i'm going to wrap with clay I have a little bit of a leak here on this one, and um, it's not too bad. Uh, you don't want a big hole, and you don't want a bunch of rice to contaminate your clay. But what I'm going to show you first is I'm making a rabbit. So I'm going to leave a little bit of room uh, for the body and the head, and we do what is called as a slip knot. Okay, We don't want to tie a knot. The concept here is we're going to do a slip knot. And I'm just going to go like this. I'm going to make a loop, but I never put the end of the knot through the hole. I put a portion of the fabric through the hole and make sure there's no rice in the area that you're making the knot. See, so here's a slip knot. Let me get a better angle. Here's a slip knot and when I pull it, it comes untied. So I'll redo it again. I make a loop and I don't put the end through. I just put a portion of the stocking through the end never goes through the slip knot and again make sure no rice where the knot is now i have a little bit of it's loose here and that's fine because i want a shape to get my rabbit shape now this is also another important concept we want to make sure we know where the slip knot is at all times okay because uh, the concept here is when uh rice gets uh wet it expands and when clay dries it shrinks so that duality of forces can really be a major problem when uh, working with this dirty rice technique so you want to be able to build and assemble and remove the rice all in one sitting you, what you don't want to do is to leave the the rice inside your form overnight all that moisture from the clay will be absorbed by the rice. It's going to expand. Uh, your clay will dry from all the moisture being taken out and the rice will expand and your piece will crack and the rice will be moldy and you'll have to throw the whole thing away. So we want to do this all in one sitting. So I have my form and I'll turn it at an angle. You might get a better view here. Okay. Now, another concept here, we're going to overlap this clay, but we don't, don't want to overlap it too much. No more than two fingers of overlap. You don't want a huge area. And another concept to understand, we don't want to fold multiple times. So um, let me get a piece of clay and show you. I have this little scrap. And if you fold a piece of clay once, you can have air trapped. You've, and then I've had students fold it again 
and look how thick it becomes. And then they try to fold it again. We're not wrapping a package and trying to create all these folds and all this extra thickness. We're gonna do what's called darting cuts and we're gonna remove the excess material. So, and again, it's, uh, we do it more spontaneously depending on the form. There's no exact way, but again, just remember no more than two inches of overlap or two fingers of overlap and you don't want folds. So you want your slab on a piece of fabric and that is going to give us the ability to really pull this tight. And again, this doesn't look any way like a rabbit, but once we get the clay around it, we can manipulate the form further. Another important concept, you want to make sure there's no gap between the rice and stocking and your clay. So you never want to roll, after you get your form covered, you never want to roll it around on the table. You want to lift in place. If you roll it around, the weight of the rice up against the clay will immediately create space between the two uh, surfaces and all that work trying to get it tight will be lost. So we're, I'll explain again as I go. <clears throat> so federally knife. And again, here's my trusty tools I'm using. We're gonna use some water. Um, this clay is really wet right out of the bag, so I don't need to score really. I'm going to use a lot of water and I'm going to compress with my uh, flexible metal rib. So I'm going to start right here. And I'll turn it at an angle so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to lift this up and pull this tight. Okay, so I have this already. And I mean, you could, if you wanted to, roll it like a burrito, kind of. I can use this way. And I'm going to use the fabric and get it tight. Now I'm going to hold this here like this and I'm going to put some water right in this area and look what I'm going to do with the fabric here. This is the thickest part. I'm going to bring this around and I'm just going to pinch it with my knuckles. I'm going to compress to hold it. That's in a holding pattern. Now I'm going to do the back end or the back of the rabbit and I'll show you what to do here. So I have all of this gap. So what we won't, don't want to do is to fold this and fold this because then we've trapped air and we've created a thickness. Uh, again, look how thick that is. That'll blow up. The concept here is we're going to take a knife and we're just going to make a cut. And we're going to get close to, whoops, we're going to get close to the uh, pantyhose form. Now again, we got all this extra clay. We don't need it. We're going to remove it. So I'm just going to take, you're going to have some scrap. Don't worry about it. Uh, that needs a dart cut. We can just go like this and then overlap that a little bit. I'm pulling that tight and that tight. Now, I wouldn't take all of this extra material and bring it all the way to the top. I only need a uh, two finger overlap. So I'm gonna trim some of this. And again, I'm gonna also show you how to patch to um, if you have make a mistake. So this here, I'm gonna get a bunch of water here. And again, my clay is wet. Again, use the fabric and I'm gonna dart this at an angle and I'm gonna dart this at an angle and I'm gonna pull this up tight using the fabric to really get it up tight. Now this is the back end. I don't have my slip knot on this end. This is extra material I don't need. Okay, a little bit of water. And again, <clears throat> trim. What's great about this technique is the quickness. It is to achieve form, hollow shape, and uh, you know, self-supporting. So now I'm gonna turn it to this end and we're gonna start to taper. Here's the front of the rabbit and I got a lot of extra material um, going on here. So now I'm gonna bring this up, more water. Again, use the fabric and get it tight. And I only want a two inch overlap, so I'm gonna have a bunch of extra. I'm gonna trim some of this. This could be an ear for my rabbit or two. Yeah, more water. And don't worry about the shape right now. We wanna get it encased as tight as possible, okay? And that's the goal. All right, now, I'm going to start here. I have this big seam. I'm going to use the round edge of my flexible metal rib and I'm going to compress this seam. You can also get carried away and really cause thin spots. 
So we just want to bring it together for right now. And I don't have a top or a bottom yet, meaning I don't know which way I'm going to interpret this yet. Um, you notice I'm not rolling it around on the table, so I'm not stretching the clay by the weight of the rice. I'm just picking it up and moving it where I need to. Now on this end, okay, so right here, my form stops right here. So I'm going to take the knife and I'm going to cut this clay. There's my slip knot. I'm just going to take all this. I'm going to use this maybe for another ear. Now, I still have some space here, so look what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a cut right on the side. Tuck that in. Now I know where my slip knot is. I'm going to bring this edge down. And again, we don't create folds. If you have a situation like that, just come here like this. Make a cut where that extra material is. Lay that down. It's better to do this technique than it is to have an overlap fold that traps air. Um, this is going to be a container, so I'm going to have the ability to open it up. And if I do, wherever I do have folds, I'm going to use my wire loop tool and I'm going to be opening those areas up and smoothing them out and making sure that um, there's no trapped air. So again, I don't need a lot of excess material overlapping. Let me get my water. Okay. So now I'm going to use my fabric again. Again, this is your leverage. Using the fabric to pull the clay tight around your pantyhose form or your dirty rice form. Now, this is the end where the head is, and that's an awfully big, but again, this is, we're just sealing it. And the fun really begins in the sculpting process. Because we're going to have resistance on this material. Excuse me, I'm coming into camera view. I'm getting me a bat. Okay, so you immediately, as soon as you get it encased, the first thing I do is I go, okay, here's my slip knot. I'm going to make a little X with my side edge of my finger. Now, we never want to roll it around. We want to lift it up, okay? So I'm putting it on a bat. Once I put it on a bat, this is how I'm going to move it around. You never want to pick up and roll this rice form. All that work we took getting the clay super tight around the form will be lost and you could have a gap of three to four inches. Just literally picking it up and rolling it once will stretch the clay that much. So I'm gonna lift it up. There. Well, it looks like a big old roast. It doesn't look like a rabbit, but we're gonna change that right now. So this is my slip knot. So here, is what this technique is all about. I'm gonna pick this up, okay, and I'm gonna to start to squeeze. And this is my rabbit. This is the head right here. And my rabbit is gonna be standing on his haunches, kinda of like my inspiration a little bit here. There's my inspiration. Let me move back a little bit. I'm gonna change camera angle so you can see. Okay, if we can get this, let me get it right. You can see what I'm doing. So here's my inspiration. And I'm going to have this guy standing up a little bit more. And then this is the head. And his head is going to be turned. So look at what I'm going to do. I'm just, I know my um, slip knot is right here. So I'm just going to start to sculpt this rabbit. And just watch it appear. There's my rabbit head. And again, the pliability of the stocking and the rice. I have the resistance so I can put pressure without it um, collapsing. And I can really, and it's getting a little dry, I don't need a lot of water. I just want some to shape the rabbit's head. It's always good to have inspiration, okay? Use that as reference points. What does a rabbit look like? Have you ever held a rabbit? You know what a rabbit looks like? You know what a rabbit feels like? Um, they do make great pets. So this is my rabbit, there's his head. Now his legs, like here, little indentations. This is kind of cartoonistic, but look what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna set up for this. I'm gonna put the hips of the rabbit right here. And all I'll have to do is add hind legs and front legs. Okay, so there's my rabbit's head. All right, smoothing, and again, you want to work, um, you do not want to leave the rice 
in for a long period of time. So make sure you have enough time to start, you know, and give yourself enough time to sculpt. While I have the rice in, again, that's the resistance, so I can apply pressure without it collapsing. And then once we remove the rice, we will um, trap air in the form, and that'll give us some resistance, but right now is the best opportunity. I'm gonna put this on a Lazy Susan. This is the best opportunity to uh, make those uh, specific changes to the form um, and to take your time, right? I'd say you could probably leave the rice in the form for maybe two hours before the rice starts to absorb moisture. So you don't want to leave it too long. Um, but give yourself enough sit down time to make that possible, okay? Yeah, there's the beginning of the hips for my rabbit. And he'll be standing up. And let's see, eyes. Probably gonna be right here. Right. So that's a good start. Now I'm ready. I'm ready to start blow drying. So again, I don't have an opportunity to edit these videos, so just bear with me. I'm probably gonna blow dry for three to five minutes. Um, I won't be talking while I'm blow drying, so you can fast forward. But then uh, once the, I put the blow dryer down, um, stop uh, your fast forwarding to watch what I do next. So here we go. I'm going to dry the form now.
Okay, back live now. We've done blow drying. It's pretty firm. Uh, I Essentially, it's not dry. I just built up a skin on the surface. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to make a cut. And what the cut is going to do is going to allow me to remove the rice. You want to be really careful at doing this. And you don't want to make a huge cut. This is the technique. Excuse me, let me get a bat and I'll show you. So... What we want to do, we want to take a piece of clay. Well, you can practice, but this is the cut I'm going to make. I'm going to hold the knife at a 45 degree angle, and I'm going to make what is called a tongue cut. And the concept here is I make a cut like this, and when I open it up, let me push it through. When I lift it up, I'll be able to open this up. I'll be able to untie the slip knot, drain the rice out, then I'm going to score around the perimeter of the beveled edge on both pieces and I'll be able to close it back up and I'll use a coil to seal it and we will trap air. So it'll be hollow, it'll hold its shape, and I can dry it further if necessary. But this is a really quick and easy way. So my slip knot, I believe, is about right here on the rabbit's head. So again, I'm going to make a tongue cut. And I'm going to do a uh, rabbit lobotomy right now, so bear with me. All right. And I'm going to open this up. Okay. There. There's my slip knot right here. When you pull the slip knot, what you don't want to do is to grab it and just yank like you're pulling a ripcord on a parachute, okay? You want to get your finger behind the slip knot so when you pull it, what we're trying to prevent is a bunch of distortion here. So here's my slip nut. Now, in our studio, we have a bucket full of rice. This is actually a uh, barrel full of rice. So we got a lot. Now I'm gonna turn the camera over here so we can get a good view of what I'm gonna do, okay? There's our barrel full of rice. Now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna take my rabbit and you want to hold it carefully. Make sure not hold it gently so it isn't going to collapse on you. And now we're just going to drain the rice. Okay. So gravity is just letting all that go right now. We use this rice a lot and it's got a lot of clay dust. So be careful. Try not to breathe in all of that stuff. If it stops draining, just give it a tug. Look at that. It's already empty. I have my form already. That's how easy that was. Let me put the lid back on so we don't create more dust in the studio. So I'm going to turn this back to my work surface. There we are. We got a hollow rabbit. Look at that. How easy that was. It's holding its shape. Now I'm going to get my modeling stick, chisel end, screwdriver end, and I'm going to score. Okay. And on this end, this is an opportunity. If you had a, a, a lot of excess clay in here on this end, you might not have an opportunity to get into this area of your sculpture again. You could take a wire loop tool, and if you had a really thick piece of clay from uh, the overlaps, you could hollow that out a little bit right now. But I'll turn this to show you. There's my uh, scored bevel cut on both sides. I'm going to add water. Okay, I'm just going to carefully bring this back down. Again, I'm going to have a little bit of distortion from cutting open the form, but now I'm going to take a piece of some my scrap. I'm going to roll a coil and I'm going to flatten it with my palm. So this is what I have have this piece of clay, a coil that's been flattened, and I'm going to put it directly over my cut. And it's right there. Okay, and again, we're trapping the air, so I'm going to blend this side of the coil. And again, this is minor, minor distortion to the form before I started drying it that I will easily be able to fix. Okay. And we already have this hollow shape. Now, what I have a lot of students do that can run into problems is they will do this quickly when they're in class.
and then they'll wrap it up really tight in plastic, uh, all, totally in plastic without letting it sit on the board or a bat. And what that does is the clay will begin to sweat, meaning we dried the outside really quickly. We wrap it up totally in plastic and we come back a couple of days and the whole thing has collapsed. And the reason for that is there's a lot of moisture on the inside and it will evaporate out to the outside, hit the inside of the plastic bag that it's covering it and the piece will collapse. So it's a good idea for at least the first day or so to leave it on a bat that is made out of wood or masonite and that absorbent quality uh, will wick some of the moisture and prevent that from happening. So again, I'm just cleaning up um, where I made the cut and re-cleaning the head. And um, you know, if you've ever raised rabbits or uh, have seen them, uh, there's lots of different breeds. There's a Flemish uh, breed of rabbit that can literally get up to 40, 50 pounds, and they're just enormous. Um, and if you've ever seen jackrabbits uh, in Southern California, uh, those rabbits are quite large. Um, and their head shape and their eyes, they're really <laughs> crazy characters. Jackrabbits will duke it out and actually fight. Several rabbits uh, breeds do that. So I have my basic shape now. And this is hollow, and I've been only demonstrating for less than 20 minutes. So to create a hollow shape that easy in that short a time, uh, and it's a basic foundation, uh, you can do numerous things and you can take multiple dirty rice forms and use them to build upon. So um, what I could do right now, um, I'm just quickly going to draw me uh, two rabbit ears and I'm going to cut them. So if I was to do this, let's see. Yeah, I'll go like this. And if these were two rabbit ears, right? So rabbits breeds have different qualities. So I'm just, I just cut up two slabs of clay and just drew out a pattern for a rabbit ear, but I'm just gonna play with this for just a second. Um, sometimes people have trouble seeing but I could have a rabbit with really long ears hanging down here like that. Um, you know, maybe you can have one ear up, one ear down. Uh, Jackrabbits are known for having these gigantic ears and out in the desert, they can really, let me turn this, they can really hear what's ahead. So, you know, Again, this is a very fast construction technique uh, that's open to numerous possibilities. So um, this is the dirty rice technique for construction. And that is it for this video, part one.